on that budget, a key focus of the Liberal government's upcoming fiscal plan is to speed up that transition to a clean economy. And that includes big investments in semiconductors and computer chips. Today, the government announced millions of dollars for an Ottawa-based semiconductor manufacturer. Francois-Philippe Champagne is the Minister of Innovation, Science and Industry. Minister, it's good to talk to you again. Well, thank you for having me today, David. So $36 million today for the production of semiconductors, $250 million or up to $250 million for IBM on Friday. How much is your government willing to spend to develop this cross-border supply chain for semiconductors? Well, I would say, first of all, uh, the announcement today was really timely. Uh, you remember the words of the President of the United States? Uh, the United States and Canada can do big things when we work together. And not only this morning is a good example, but you remember Friday, the president mentioning that Canada has a key role in this, in this supply chain in North America, that what I've been saying for a number of months, that the, the largest packaging and testing center in North America happens to be in Quebec in Canada with IBM. So not only we signed with IBM, the president uh, mentioned the key role of Canada. And today is another example of an investment that, that positioned Canada well in a key strategic supply chain. You know, my vision has always been, we cannot do everything, we're Canada, but what we can do is to insert ourselves in key supply chain. And I would say semiconductor is probably one of the most important we can insert ourselves. And this morning, uh, the announcement is not only about uh, manufacturing the most advanced semiconductor, but those that will reduce energy consumption mm -hmm. because uh, data centers around the world, believe it or not today, uh, if you put them together, are consuming more than, for example, South Africa and Argentina in terms of energy uh, which is needed. So what we're investing today is going to be at the forefront uh, of the new technology on semiconductor. So th it's a commitment, though, up to about almost $290 million uh, since Friday, based on the IBM deal and this one. I mean, I mean uh, how much is this going to be a significant part of the budget in terms of a big semiconductor strategy? Are we going to see a lot of money being announced on this tomorrow? Well, as you know, I can't go into the details of the budget, but one thing I can tell you, though, is that what you're seeing is kind of a down payment because we know that semiconductors are going to be key, just as critical minerals. I mean, our mission has been, how do we position Canada for the economy of the 21st century? Uh, and we know that semiconductors, critical minerals, are, are going to be key in that. So for Canada uh, to integrate itself in this key supply chain within uh, the North American context, I would say, uh, is a big win. I would say the visit of the president, uh, the words of the president, and mentioning Canada and recognizing the $2.5 billion in, in bilateral trade on a daily basis. You know, we know that in Canada, but it's always good when the U.S. president reminds the world of the uh, special nature and integrated nature of our supply chains. How can you make the investments you need, though, to build the supply chain and compete with the United States uh, when we also are in this period of high inflation and pressures to reduce spending? How, how do you thread that needle? Well, I would say it would be responsible uh, not to make those investments because if you want to win in the economy of the 21st century, you need to, have to, you, you need to seize these generational opportunities. Uh, what you're seeing, for example, when we're going from a, 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 a gas engine to an electric uh, vehicle, uh, those type of transformation only happen once in a lifetime. Uh, so these type of, of uh, transition, uh, either you seize the moment or you have to wait for another 50 years. So my point is that uh, there would be an enormous cost of inaction. Uh, the, the role we have chosen is to make sure that we invest so that Canadians can have dividends not only now, but for generations to come. I was on the phone with Volkswagen this morning and they were reminding me, say, Minister, we're not here for 10 years, we're not here for 20 years, we're here for 100 years uh, in Canada. So what you're seeing today is that these investments will provide dividends for generations to come. And I would say, right. I would even put it, it would be irresponsible uh, at a moment where you see an inflection point uh, in industrial policy for Canada not to be at the forefront and making sure that we seize these opportunities for generations to come. Okay, so if this is truly an inflection point and you need to seize this opportunity, a once in a lifetime chance, you've heard people like Goldie Hyder from the Business Council of Canada say that the budget measures need to be at least proportional to what the United States is doing. You can't go dollar for dollar, but for every $10 the U.S. spends, Canada needs to spend a dollar. Are we going to see that level of ambition from your government in the budget tomorrow? Well, we've already kind of indicated, you know, in the Falkheimic statement, we said that we need to level the playing field. 
And we need to be selective uh, because, you know, the United States can do certain things. They're the reserve currency of the world. But what we can do in Canada is to be focused, to be selective, and to be strategic. And I think that's what you're seeing with Volkswagen. Uh, that's what you're seeing with IBM. Uh, that's what you've been seeing in a number of sectors in aerospace and defense where we have been selective and strategic uh, to make sure that we invest in the economy of the 21st century. And, and that's the best insurance policy for Canadians because you want to make sure that Canada uh, would be at the forefront. We have the workers, we have the ecosystems, we have the critical minerals, we have the renewable energy, we have the access to market. Honestly, David, uh, since a couple of weeks, my phone has never been ringing like that because the world realized that it's no longer why Canada, it's how and when, and we need to capitalize on that. Right, so to capitalize on that, uh, Scotty Greenwood of the Canada American Business Council says critical minerals, semiconductors, to capitalize on that, Canada needs to speed up its pace of project approval. Do you agree with that? Will we see measures in this budget to speed things up? Well, we can always do better. Uh, and for sure, you always need to see at ways we can improve. But one thing that we need to do, and I think we've been doing that quite successfully, is to make the case for Canada. Let's be honest, David, who was talking about Canadian semiconductors in the same phrase uh, six months ago? Uh, you have to uh, recognize that over a few months, not only we've positioned Canada well, we have drawn significant investment, and we even have the president mentioning now Canada in the context of semiconductors. So what we've done in semiconductors, we're doing in the battery ecosystem, we're gonna do in the electric vehicle, we're doing it in biomanufacturing, and the list goes on. You know me, we're not gonna rest because uh, you know th this is kind of a moment we need to seize and we need to be ambitious. And, and the, the, the mistake we would do is not to be ambitious enough. We need to be ambitious because we have everything to succeed in that new economy. You, this investment in the transition is a key part of your climate policy. Carbon pricing is a key part of your climate policy, and they kind of go hand in hand. And some businesses are concerned about investing in, in clean tech uh, as a response to the market pressures of carbon pricing and worried about the competitive situation they would find themselves in should Mr. Polyev form government and eliminate carbon pricing uh, for, for these companies. My colleagues at Radio Canada are reporting that the budget tomorrow is going to lock in what amounts to an insurance program to some degree, committing the government to paying companies uh, for the losses they might suffer or to compensate them should the carbon tax ever be reduced or eliminated by a future government as a way of locking it in. What can you tell us about that, sir? Well, listen, you have to look forward. If Mr. Poiliev wants to look backward, that's his thing. But the world is going in one direction, it's pretty clear. I mean, you've seen the IRA, for example, in the United States, it is really drawing significant investments in North America. We see a realignment of global supply chain, which are becoming regional. You see onshoring, continental onshoring in Canada. And I would say, I think Canadians trust us to say, listen, you need to look at the future. You need to make sure you make the investment and have the framework to secure these investments that will pay dividends for generations to come. Uh, I don't think it's a time to stop or to look backward. Uh, the world is going in one direction. You saw even in Europe, uh, the new directive for electric vehicle by 2035. I mean, it is clear that we are decarbonizing a number of industry. We've done that in aluminum, uh, in steel. Uh, we're doing it with batteries. Uh, I want to do it with microchips. And you know, it's paying dividends. You may have seen recently for the viewers, BMW. Right. BMW said all the aluminum they need for manufacturing cars in North America will come from Saguenay in Quebec. So our strategy, our vision is paying dividends with, with some of the biggest brands in the world choosing Canada as a place to source uh, their uh, components. So I want us to be the green supplier of choice, and that's really the direction where you see uh, you know, the economy and I would say uh, the industry going in many sectors. So just as a final point, will you take these steps? Is, is this, on, based on this report, is this the direction we can anticipate your government going in to lock in carbon pricing by offering to compensate people who might be harmed if it's ever screwed? Well, listen, I can go into the specifics. That's going to be for the budget. But one thing I can assure your viewers and Canadians is we're going to look forward. Uh, we're going to make sure that we have the policies in place to win in the economy of the 21st century. And I think we owe it to the workers around the country. We depend uh, on, on these investments for generations to come. So uh, we had their back during COVID. We're going to build the economy of the 21st century together. Okay, Minister Champagne, thanks so much. Thank you, sir.